Well, good morning. It's good to be back in the office today after our two weeks of holiday. Uh, we've been down, uh, we being myself, my wife, uh, Hope and Michael, uh, we've all been down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where we've enjoyed just wonderful time uh, being there on the lovely beaches, swimming in the ocean, uh, and, and being with, with family. You see, down in Fort Lauderdale, the area commander's there, and my wife, my wife's sister, and our brother-in-law, and living with them is our niece and nephew. And so we enjoyed, uh, yes, the, the beauty of Fort Lauderdale, but we certainly particularly enjoyed just being with family. And the highlight for me most days was when we, we would have dinner together. We'd break bread together at the end of the day. Today, I want to talk about um, a meal, uh, someone breaking bread, if you will, from Scripture. Uh, quite a well-known passage of, of Scripture and a meal that's well-known, not necessarily for the meal's sake, but for those who were present. It's a story we find in like Luke chapter 5, starting at verse 27, where it says this. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything and followed him. Then Levi had a great banquet for Jesus at his house and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to the disciples. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Indeed, if we look at scripture, we see a number of instances where Jesus sought out uh, sinners, if you will. Uh, of course, you have this story of Levi or Matthew, as we get to know him better as one of the disciples. Uh, we see the stories of Jesus casting demons out of people. Um, similarly to Levi, we see another tax collector in Zacchaeus where Jesus went to his house. We see the story of the Samaritan woman at the well. We see the, the adulterous woman. There, there are many stories involved in Jesus and his searching out of the sinner. In our first appointment in Fredericksburg, Virginia, uh, in the first year that we were there, we had a, a hypothermia shelter. It was a shelter designed to, to bring in the most chronic of homeless so that they could stay there on the coldest of nights, basically saving their lives. It was so they wouldn't die of the cold. And uh, they come as they were. If they were drunk, high, whatever the case may be, they were invited in and, and we gave them a cot for the night and the next day they went on their way. But it also gave me an opportunity to get to know a few of the, of the homeless folk uh, in Fredericksburg. And one of them was a guy by the name of Bruce. Now, Bruce was a burly fella, a bit of a bully uh, amongst the homeless. And and, uh, but I got to know Bruce quite early on, and, and once we got through some of the bravado and the tough guy image, I, I managed to, to find out a few things about Bruce and started to, to have a rapport and a ministry with him. One Sunday, Bruce came to church, and he was a little drunk. Um, if you know much about the chronic homeless, you'll know that's a condition that is rampant. And so Bruce was quite drunk as he came in that particular morning, and I preached. I did, we, did, we had our worship service. I preached, and at the end, uh, we had the altar call. And as, as, as people came forward, Bruce came. So I came down from the platform and I prayed with Bruce and, and Bruce, well, he was drunk and he was a bit loud. I had to tell him a few times just to kind of keep it down. Let's not get too loud here, Bruce. Well, we finished uh, praying, the meeting finished, people went on their way, Bruce went on his way. And one lady waited for me till the end because she wanted to tell me how she disgusted she was that I would allow this man to come and kneel at the mercy seat in that drunken state. Of course, I responded to her saying, well, if someone is in a state, if somebody, you know, is, is, is sinful, what better place to go than the mercy seat? Surely kneeling before Christ uh, is a very appropriate thing to do uh, when you're in a bad way. Uh, she and I sort of disagreed on that point, but I still feel quite firmly, simply because Jesus set the example. He said, I want sinners to come to me. But we can be guilty sometimes, can't we, of thinking we have to get ourselves clean and we have to be appropriate and we have to be all this, that and the other before we can come to Christ. Yet Christ says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for me. An important thing to point out as well, as we look at these accounts of Jesus hanging out with Levi, Zacchaeus, the adulterous woman, uh, the Samaritan woman, whatever the case may be. At no point did Jesus say, your sin is okay. He never said that. He never said your sin is okay. He did say your sins are forgiven. He did say in the case of Zacchaeus, salvation has come to this house. He did bring Levi to be one of the 12 disciples. 
But he never said your sin is okay. Again, differentiating between the sin and the sinner. We've been called to the sinner. Each one of us has. Now, perhaps rather than using the word sinner, I might say those who are lost to Christ, those who don't have a relationship with him, because we would argue that we're all sinners. I believe we've been called to this world, to those who are lost to Christ. But I think we can also be guilty, and I certainly look at myself in this, of, of, of withdrawing from the world, of putting our children in Christian schools and, and staying inside of our, our churches, inside the church walls where it's very, very comfortable. And thereby neglecting the world and neglecting the sinner. Look around you, friends. There are sinners everywhere. We see them on our television screens. And we see them when we drive down the road. We, we encounter them as we, as we cut somebody up or they cut us up. It, it, it's, it's a rampant issue. This is the world we're called to. These are the people Jesus wants us to be with. Go into the world, he says, and make disciples of all nations, of all people. Bring them to me, he said. Bring them to me. Bring the sinner. So friends, this morning is just a reminder and just a thought as we look at that story of Levi, as we look at the issues that the, uh, uh, that the, the religious people of the day had with Jesus, that we are still to go out. We are still to find the sinner. And we are still to bring them to Christ. God bless you this morning.